In this course, you're going to learn by doing. So let's just go right into getting started and actually starting to build that website using nothing but AWS services. First things first, you need to sign up for an AWS account if you don't already have one, of course. And I'll show you how to do that shortly. Once you have your AWS account, we're going to create a little static web page on S3. That's Amazon's simple storage service. And that's all you need to actually vend static content to the world. And after we've done that, we'll go ahead and view that site in your browser. Very important to follow along in this lecture because we're going to download the resources for this course as part of it. So um, don't skip past this one, guys. Now, of course, you need to sign up for AWS if you don't already have an Amazon Web Services account. So you can use that URL at the top there to actually head on over to the sign up page for AWS. You will have to enter a email address that's associated with an Amazon account, ideally, and also a credit card. Uh, now, even though you're entering a credit card, I want to assure you that we're not going to be using very, very small amounts of AWS capacity here. And if you're starting up a new account, they will all be covered under the free tier. Now, AWS can change their terms from time to time. So ultimately, it's up to you to make sure that usage of what you're going to do for the services in this course is, in fact, free. The services we're going to use in this course are S3, the API Gateway, the Lambda, DynamoDB, Cognito, CloudFront, IAM, and CloudWatch services. And if you want to confirm what the current policies are for free usage of those services, you can head over to aws.amazon.com slash free to double check that those are in fact still offered for free for low usage. And for the purpose of this course, the usage should in fact be well within those ranges. So let's take a look at those two websites so you know what to expect. All right, let's do this. And a reminder, we are getting into the hands-on portion of the course here. So no just watching me, you have to actually do this stuff. And we're gonna go a little bit quickly. So if you need to hit the pause button on the video as we go along so you can do things on your own and catch up, don't fear the pause button, it is your friend. So let's take a look at those two URLs that I talked about on the slides. If you do need to create a new AWS account, head on over to portal.aws.amazon.com slash billing slash signup. And you should see a screen that looks like this where you can start the process with your email address, set up a password and a name for your account and continue. And that will guide you through the process of creating your new AWS account if you need a new one. Now it will prompt you for payment information. And again, you should be able to do pretty much everything in this course for free. If it's a new account, then you have 12 months of free usage of pretty much everything. And if you want the details of what AWS does offer for free, there's different classes here. There's a certain set of services that are available for free during the first 12 months of your account. So if you're using a new account, you can use this much stuff for free during your first 12 months and you'll spot a few things that we're using in the course, such as CloudFront. And if you just scroll through, you can see the whole list here. And then there's also a set of things that are always free up to a certain limit. Uh, S3 is in there as well, which we're also gonna be using in this lecture. And always free will show you what you can use for free, even if you're not using a new account. So, but either way, even if you do have an old account and some things do get billed for, the, the amount of usage that we're gonna be using in the context of this course is minuscule. So you're not gonna get billed for a whole lot of money for this course, even in a worst case scenario. So with that out of the way, next thing we need to do is actually download the materials for this course and get set up for it. So to do that, I want you to spark up your browser and head on over to sundog-education.com slash serverless. And you should get to a page that looks a little bit something like this. Again, sundog-education.com slash serverless. It will walk you through how to get set up for this course. There is a Facebook group for this course that you can optionally join. It's not required, but it's kind of a fun place to hang out. It's a spam free group. So head on over there if you want to collaborate with your fellow students and to download the actual resources that you will need in this lecture, click on this link here to get the resources.zip file. So I'm going to hit that right now and that should download into whatever download folder your downloads normally go into. All right. And optionally, you can join our mailing list, but totally not required, totally up to you. The important thing is that you downloaded those resources and you got that resources.zip file in your download. So let's go ahead and uh, open up your downloads folder and decompress that in whatever means makes sense for whatever operating your system you're on. And on Windows, I'm just going to right click on that and say extract all on Mac OS or something. You might need some third party application uh, to unzip a file because I don't think zip format is built into Mac OS. Go ahead and extract that. However, makes sense for your OS. And you should see something like this. So inside the resources folder, you'll see that there are several different versions of the resources for the web application that we're going to build. 
and they go from V1 to V2 to V3 and so on. We'll go through each version of the site as we progress through the course and add more and more functionality and more and more complexity to it, and you'll learn more and more stuff as we go. But we'll start with V1, the most simplest incarnation of our serverless web application. And you can see inside here there's a site folder, and this is what contains all of that static content that we talked about. So the static HTML, some static JavaScript, some static CSS, some static fonts, and this is what we're going to initially upload to S3 right now to get a bare bones site up and running that we can actually use. If you want to peek at what's in here, you can. You know, you can right click on one of these HTML files and say, open with WordPad or whatever text editor you want and say, hey, look, there's actually an HTML file in there. And not too complicated yet, and we'll talk through what's going on in here shortly, but for now, we just want to see it in action. So let's go ahead and get this uploaded to AWS. So let's open up a new tab and head on over to https colon slash slash console dot aws dot amazon dot com. Make sure you get that exactly right. It's very easy to mess up and just type in aws dot com. I do that all the time, but it won't work. Console dot aws dot amazon dot com. And that should lead you to here where you can sign in with your account. Enter in your own email address associated with your own AWS account, not mine, <laughs> and hit the next button. And enter your password, and in we go. Now we're gonna be playing with the S3 service, so type in S3 into the search box here and hit enter. And here we are in the S3 service. You can see I already have a few buckets of my own set up here for other projects. Your list will probably be empty, but you're gonna create a new bucket for the purpose of this course. So. Go ahead and click the big friendly create a new bucket button here and enter a new bucket name. Now remember, this bucket name needs to be unique across all of the world of S3. So you can try doing something like, uh, you know, your unique username or company name or something like that. Uh, let's try like fkane-sundog-serverless. Now don't enter that name yourself. It has to be a unique name. So substitute in your own name in there, substitute your own uh, website that you have registered to yourself, just something to make that bucket name unique, but something you'll still remember. For a region, select something close to you preferably. Um, I'm actually in Florida, so the US East region makes sense for me. And we'll go ahead and hit the create button at this point, because we're pretty much done. The defaults are A-OK -okay for everything else. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that bucket that I just created and go into it. And now we're gonna click the big friendly upload button. So now we'll just upload the version one of the actual contents of the site itself into here. And you can either hit the add files button to do that through a UI or just drag and drop. Drag and drop's more fun, so let's do that. Let's pop back out to the folder here that we downloaded and we're back here in the resources V1 site folder here within the resources that we downloaded earlier. Make sure you're under V1 site and you're not uploading the site folder itself. You're uploading the things inside the V1 site folder. Okay, so let's go ahead and select everything in there and drag and drop it over to the upload dialog. Now we'll hit the next button to proceed. Now, since we're basically building a website, we want this content to be accessible to the world. So under manage public permissions, I'm gonna go ahead and change that to grant public read access to these objects. And it's gonna say, are you sure about this? It's gonna make this content visible to the world? Well, yeah, that's the whole point. I'm trying to build a website here, guys. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and hit upload. And there it goes. So we have now moved the static content for our little chat application website into the cloud, into Amazon's S3 service. So that's pretty awesome progress already, right? So next we need to make this S3 bucket look like it's a website. So to do that, we're gonna click on the Properties tab here. Make sure you're following along with me. And we're going to select Static Website Hosting because that's what we're doing. We're vending static content and making it look like a website. Go ahead and click on that. And we're gonna select Use This Bucket to Host a Website. Under Index Document, we can actually use index.html. We don't actually have an index.html file yet, but that is kind of the standard uh, document that you use for your index, and we will hit save. Now let's click on the static website hosting box again, and here we have an endpoint link. So this is basically now the externally accessible URL that I can use to actually hit this website from. So think about what we just did here. We just uploaded some static HTML and CSS and JavaScript content into an S3 bucket, and through this little UI here, we've actually made a website out of it, with an actual externally available URL and 
you know, DNS is being taken care of us for us and everything. So we can actually just uh, click on that endpoint at this point, follow that link. Now we're getting an error because it's looking for an index.html file that doesn't yet exist, but we do have other HTML files in there that we can add instead. So go ahead and select the address bar here and select the end there, put your cursor at the end of it. And let's add on slash chats.html, just like that, okay? Because we did have a chats.html file in the content that we uploaded. So now if I hit that, check it out. You have your very own copy of our serverless chat application up and running within your own AWS account. It's all just sitting in your S3 bucket and you're hitting it just like a website right now. So, you know, apart from the convoluted URL that we have here right now, and you know, we can change that later, you've got an actual serverless application running right now. I mean, that's pretty exciting, right? You actually have a serverless app up and running already, and it took like, you know, two minutes. <laughs> I mean, that's how easy AWS can be. People talk about it like this huge complex beast, and I mean, it can be. AWS is this massive ecosystem, but the individual components are usually pretty simple. That's kind of the power of AWS. There's a lot of simple pieces and the magic is just knowing how to put them all together. We can also look at the chat.html file that we uploaded as well as part of our resources. Just take the S off of chats and you can see that works as well. That brings up the web page for actually typing in a chat message to somebody. So, hey, it's working. It was just that easy. Congratulations. You now have your very own serverless app up and running. The rest of the course, we're just going to keep building upon it. So let's do it. At this point, you have a good idea of what we're going to build throughout the course, a fully functional chat application built on the web, built entirely with just AWS services. Throughout the rest of the course, we'll build up this application from scratch one component at a time, and you'll learn about the various parts of AWS and how they fit together as we go. Taking you into the next section is my co-instructor, Brian Tajidin. Brian and I work together at Amazon, and although I'm doing most of the talking in this course, Brian put together all of the course curriculum and course materials. So take us in, Brian.